Hey guys, welcome to episode 10 of Crash Nitro Car. Last we left off, I'm not even going to spoil it. Just watch for yourself. Point is, we got everything in Phenomena. On to Technies races. And these ones can get kind of hard. We're starting things off with Android Alley. Well, they get hard in terms of like the Relic races. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is the only time in the game where the Relic races are actually somewhat tricky. Put it to you that way. But yeah, attack these tracks. Their theme is consistent, but I don't think the quality is quite as good as Phenomena. If you want my opinion. I mean, they are some pretty good tracks, I'll give them that, but they're also kind of long. Oh, right, the shield wore off. Duh, it was temporary. Kind of forgot about that, but whatever. And of course, there's a Wumpa Crate right there. Okay, maybe Android Alley isn't so long, but I know the other ones can be. And as, speaking of the whole stat thing from the last episode, how I mentioned that the GBA version has different stats for engine than the console version. I'm not sure about Cortex or not. I want to say in the console versions he has the same stats as in CTR, like, good all around. But don't quote me on that. He might, I'm not certain. If anyone can clarify, please do, because I do not know the console versions at all. Wow, look at how far back they are. I mean, really, just look how far back these guys are. I thought the rubber banding was supposed to keep going, but apparently not. Like, wow. <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, honestly. <laughs> I'm just taking a giant victory lap at this point, and they have no way to stop me. I mean, yeah, there is the Twister, which is basically like the Warp Warp from CTR, which was essentially the blue shell of that game. But I've got a shield right now, so... Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> a racer that gave you a way to counter a blue shell equivalent before Mario Kart did it. In fact, this game actually, those games actually gave you two ways, well, CTR in particular. It gave you the shield and the invincibility mask if you really wanted to use it for that. Yeah. That was pathetic. I was basically on autopilot while they were struggling. Oh, wow. How far ahead was I? I mean, really. I'm actually curious. I know it was definitely farther than, I want to say it was... Meteor Gorge? Yeah, I think it was Meteor Gorge. Wow. 27 seconds, pretty much, and they all finished around the same time. That was pathetic. And this is supposed to be the final main world? Yeah, we kind of know about Uka Uka, just shut up. Right. Gonna refresh the recording for a second. Alright, I am back, and yeah, let's just hope this next one's a bit more challenging, shall we? Assembly Lane. Now, there are two Wumpa Crates here, but I usually only ever see one. Reason being, there is a shortcut here, and it's fairly obvious where it is. I always take that shortcut, but the thing is, it bypasses the second Wumpa Crate completely. I think somebody got hit by my ice trap. Indeed, it was Crash. But yeah, just for the sake of showing where the Wumpa Crate is, I'll take the normal route this one time. Well, perfect time to get a shield. And here we go. The Wumpa Crate should be just up ahead. There it is. And I missed it. I wanted to try and hit it and get out of there without hitting a wall at the same time, but apparently I can't do that. Whatever. But yeah, I usually never take that route. 
It's always the shortcut I go after. Anyway, just so I can have something to talk about, I recently started checking out the demo for Eat Beat Dead Spike Song, which, for those not to know, it's a Blaze Blue Rhythm game that recently hit the eShop, and it's pretty weird, to say the least. It's fun as hell, but on hard mode, good luck getting S ranks, especially on Bullet Dance 2. And just to clarify on that, the original Bullet Dance was already a fairly good track, but Bullet Dance 2, oh my god. God. Like, it blows the original completely out of the water. Chrono Phantasma was the one to bring that in, in case you didn't know. Oh, and here's the shortcut. And speaking of Chrono Phantasma, that was the one to bring in all of the remixes of the original character themes. But we also got the options to choose between the remixes and the originals from Calamity Trigger and Continuum Shift. Yeah, that was a good option, because there are some... Originals that I prefer over the remixes, such as Alexandrite for Makoto. As far as Awakening the Chaos for Lambda 11 and New 13, I'm not sure which one I prefer there. Lambda gets the original while New gets the remix, for those who are curious. And speaking of which, I'll say it again, Lambda is better. I don't care what anyone says, Lambda over New. How the hell New is more popular than Lambda in the popularity poll? I have no clue. And to that end, how in the hell is my Natsume the most popular Blaze Blue Girl? Over Noelle Vermillion! And in fact, speaking of Noelle as far as remixes I prefer, well, duh, bullet dance. Uh, but speaking of which, poor Noelle, or Noellers if you want to go by her nickname, suffers from Tingle Syndrome, where she's really popular among the Japanese community, but the American audience, for some reason, can't stand her. I don't know why. Like, seriously, I don't know why. Well, at least this was definitely more challenging than Android Alley. Uh, who else makes it? Oxide, alright, fair enough. I've been doing these Uka Uka, you can shut up now. Right, I'll be right back. Alright, on to the final trophy race. Electron Avenue. This particular track has a bit of an issue with the in-game lag. You see these turbo pads? These really long ones? There can be some major lag on these things. Usually when you have a bunch of racers on screen at one time. And that lag can get so bad that it can cause the game to do a hard freeze. Oh, I don't know if you noticed it, but there are some androids on the track that'll be your obstacles here. They'll also be the death of you in the relic race. I'll leave it at that. But about that hard freeze. If anyone's wondering how the hell I know about that, it actually happened to me on that practice run. That's kind of an annoyance, to say the least. Frickin' androids. Yeah, these things give me a major pain in the neck, can't you tell? I was trying to go for the Wumper Crate, damn. You guys are on top of me today. Ugh, major lag. Crunch? That was mine. You bastard. Yeah, take an android to the face. Frickin' bandicoots. Persistent little bugger, aren't ya? Well, I tell you this, but my first place. And it's going to stay that way. It better stay that way. Fucking bowling bombs. Man, you guys are persistent. Oh, I got so focused on trying to dodge the... I think I hit somebody off the track. During my respawn time. Because during the respawn time, I'm pretty sure you already knew this. But you have your respective mask spawning you in. 
and that acts like you have the invincibility mask on. There you go. There's some major lag, and ironically, when I only had one racer on screen. Homing missile. Depends on if I need to burn the shield or not, or if I end up burning it on accident. Lag. Fuck you, Entropy. I actually bumped him off the track there, too. That's kind of amazing. I hear a missile. Let's just... Wow. I tried to use it in at least a somewhat practical way to get an item crate, and I completely missed it. God, my name sucks. Whoa. Shit, do not want to get hit by that thing near the end. Man, these guys are persistent today. But, I would safely say at this point, victory is as good as mine. Well, that was fairly close. But, whatever. With that, all 12 trophy races are now cleared. And, no more hints from Uka Uka. Right, I'll be right back. Alright, with all 12 trophy races taken care of, there's one final world champion. Geary, the champion of Techni. And it's not apparent in this version, but it's definitely present in the console versions. Gary is a major neat freak, and that's putting it lightly. <laughs> He's also the hardest of the four world champions, usually. Because he throws bowling bombs. And, to correct myself from the big norm mistake... If he is behind you, I don't know why I said if he's in front of you when I was referring to Big Norm. But yeah, Gary will actively try to attack you by throwing the bowling bombs in front of him. Yeah, that usually makes him pretty hard. I say usually because, as you can see, his AI can screw up quite a bit. And by quite a bit, I mean throughout most of the race. If you couldn't tell, we're on Android Alley. But yeah, when he's not screwing up, Gary's actually pretty hard. If he does screw up, though, take any and all chances you can get. Well, at least he's catching up fairly quickly, anyway. Never mind. Seems like as soon as I try to give the guy credit, he just screws up. Well, thank you for proving my point. There he goes. Come on, Geary. I wanted a challenge. Well, I'm bound to get one sooner or later. Oy. But yeah, Geary is usually the hardest of the four world champions, but God, is his AI bad when it comes to certain turns? Like, sometimes he'll make it, sometimes he won't. Come on, Gary. I wanted more of a challenge. For a final world champion, you're supposed to be tougher than this. Uh, he did it again. And there he goes again. Come on. When I can drive your tracks better than you can, that's... sad. To say the least. What's actually kind of sad is that Norm is harder than you. Well, as far as, like, how well you did here. You're supposed to be the hardest of the four, but don't worry, you'll get a chance to redeem yourself eventually. Yeah, if that's the case, then how did you keep driving off the track? Dumbass. Team Cortex, actually.
and it just automatically warps us to be below Citadel. But, we need to clean up Techni first. And, that's what we're gonna go do. So next time on Crash Nitro Kart, we're going to start cleaning out Techni. Later, guys. Ready?